copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling all cars, attention all cars, attention all Fresno County Sheriff's cars, broadcast 79 regarding a murder. The body of Fulton Lefair found on his ranch near Fresno. That's all. Tonight, Rio Grande welcomes Fresno to that fast-growing list of cities who fight crime with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Fresno has speeded up all police cars, as well as ambulances, fire engines, and other emergency equipment, with the gasoline that powers more police cars wherever it is sold than any other brand. Congratulations, Fresno, from the Los Angeles Police Department. We've been using Rio Grande cracked gasoline in all Los Angeles police cars for many years. Good work, Fresno. The police of Oakland are glad you choose the same fine gasoline that now powers all Oakland emergency cars. The police of Berkeley are glad to see their judgment confirmed by Fresno police. Berkeley changed to Rio Grande cracked many months ago. The city of Merced is delighted that our neighboring city of Fresno also uses Rio Grande cracked gasoline. We warn criminals that our police cars are now better equipped than ever before. How about a word from Arizona? You California cities need Rio Grande cracked gasoline for speed and power. The sheriff's cars of Arizona counties must cover plenty of territory to catch criminals. We need power and speed. We have to have mileage from our gasoline, too. We're glad to tell you that Rio Grande cracked gasoline gives us everything. Rio Grande is mighty proud that so many cities specify cracked gasoline exclusively for emergency engines. But we don't want the public to think that we make a special gasoline just for police cars. No, indeed. These cities use exactly the same Rio Grande cracked gasoline that you can get from your independent neighborhood dealer. At no extra cost, you too can enjoy police car performance. And now it is our great pleasure to present Sheriff George J. Overholt of Fresno County. Sheriff Overholt. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the West. I am honored to join the ranks of the peace officers whose cases have been dramatized on calling all cars. Situated as we are in Fresno, midway between two of the largest cities in the West, our policing problems are often of a cooperative nature. As we are called upon to assist the authorities of Los Angeles and San Francisco, in intercepting the flight of criminals from one of these cities to the other. Nevertheless, we have our own crime problems. During Prohibition, we had many cases of hijacking from the bonded wineries of our famed vineyards, which gave us much trouble. And just as in the great metropolitan centers, so in the smaller cities, we find that wherever human beings congregate, crime and vice will attempt to flourish. Our job is to keep at it at a minimum. From the file to Fresno County, Calling All Cars presents tonight an intriguing case which began years ago, and the final sentence of which was not written until quite recently. We hope that you will enjoy this dramatization. Our story tonight begins nearly 20 years ago in Fresno, California, in front of a cheap burlesque house. Yeah, 
me. What's the idea of wasting your time talking to that rope? That's none of your business. You've got to promise lots of things sometimes to sell tickets. Yeah? Well, you're never going to make any big dough selling tickets in this dump. None of these things got any dough, Anna. I'll see you after the show, Lee. I don't want to argue with you now. You'll talk to me right now and you'll like it. i got to sell tickets. There ain't any more customers. The show's dying on the feet and you know it. Huh. Melville of here and 15 Broadway beauties, my foot. A lot of rejection from the Barbary Coast honky tonk. What are you going to do when they close up and you're out of a job? I'll find another one. You bet you will. I've found one for you already. What do you mean? Yeah. See this advertisement in the paper? Wanted housekeeper. Good home, not much work. Inquire, Boston and Lester, block 32, Fresno. I don't want to be a housekeeper. I like it here. There's lights and noise. Maybe an easy mark will come along. Listen, baby. The easy mark has come along. This old buzzard is lousy with dough. He lives on a ranch in the outskirts of town, all by himself. Lee, I tell you, I'm not interested. Oh, yes, you are. You're going to do just as I say. Now, you get out there tomorrow and get that job. But on the time for the old monkey. Show, boss. Show, boss. Yeah, quiet you down now. Better get my milking done before sundown. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Uh, you won't be jealous, will you, bossy girl, if that advertisement I put in the paper works, will you? <laughs> I'll see that my <laughs> housekeeper treats you nice, bossy. Yes, I promise you that. <coughs> huh? Who's that? What do you want? Uh, are you Mr. Lazare? Yes, that I am. I've come to see you about the ad you put in the paper. Oh, you did, huh? Well, how long have you been standing there at the door? Just a minute. Didn't hear what I was saying, did you? Why, no. Was you saying something? Uh, yes, yeah, I, I was talking to Bossy. Yeah, I get lonely. have to talk to someone. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Bossy never talks back. <laughs> I see. So, you come about the advertisement, eh? Yeah. What's your name? Patricia Wells. Yeah, where are you from? Madeira. Married? No. Ever been married? No. Uh-huh. Old enough to be married, ain't you? And more. Oh, yeah. Nearly 30. But the right man never came along. Yeah, they say he will someday, eh? <laughs> yeah, they say he will. Nice, plump girl like you. Pretty, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you don't need to blush. It's just an old man saying it. Well, you look strong. Think you'd like to take care of me? Keep the house up and help me with the work around the place? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, pay you $10 a month and you keep. Well, it ain't much, but I think I like you and... So I'll take it. Well, you don't say. You think you like me. <laughs> Can you milk? Oh, sure. Let's see your milk bossy here. All right. There now, bossy. Quiet. Yeah, so. Uh, there you be. How's that? Fine. Fine. As well or better than I can do it. I learned how when I was a little girl. My. What's pretty hair you got? Oh. Yellow. Like corn tassels waving in the sunlight. And your cheeks. Pink as your ripe peach, and softer to touch. Uh, do, you, do you think you'll like it here, Patricia? I know I will. It does not take Buck from Anna more than a few weeks to lead the dazzled and bewildered old rancher to the altar. Life becomes an unbelievably rosy paradise for lonely, toothless old Boston LaFerre. Everywhere his bride goes, the old man's hungry eyes follow her. For the re rejuvenation of the spirit which she has brought him, she knows he would do anything. So one evening at supper... Yeah, my, my, Patricia. They certainly are fine riddles. Do I measure up as a cook, Boston? You measure up every way, Patricia. <laughs> every way. I don't know how I ever got along before you come to me. It's uh, certain that Sadie, my first wife, never could turn out eating food like this. <laughs> Austin, you shouldn't speak of the dead that way. Oh, well, I don't mean no disrespect. Sadie was a good woman, as far as she went. Austin, I'm worried about you. Worried about me? What you worried about me for? I'm worried about your health. About my health? Why? I never felt better in my life. Eating good and sleeping good. Yeah, that's all very well. But there's a lot of hard work around here. And I think you need help. I don't need no help. I've been working this ranch 20 years by myself. Guess I can go on now. Especially since uh, I got you. But if you had another hand, 
You could plant more vines in that south field. And you could put in a couple of more cows. Why didn't pay? Don't want to. I got enough money in the bank. There's several thousand dollars I got. And I got you. And that's all I need. I don't want no LNF around here. Well, Faustin, here's what I'm driving at. My cousin's coming to California. Your cousin? Yeah. My cousin George. He wrote me and said he was leaving the farm back in Idaho and wanted to know if I could find him a job. Well, I thought maybe we could give him work. Oh, well, that's different. Seeing as how it's your cousin and you're asking me to do it, yeah, that's a lot different. Then and, and you will take him on as a hired hand? Yeah, I guess we can manage to do that. Fix him up a little room out in the stable. Oh, Boston, you're so sweet. Sweet? <laughs> sweet. <laughs> And so in much less time than it takes to travel from Idaho, Cousin George arrives at the little ranch. From the first, old man Lasser dislikes him. But for the sake of his wife, he keeps his opinions to himself. For several days, Cousin George makes himself useful around the ranch. And then one evening at supper time, he and Anna pause on the back porch. All right, Emma. Let's get over with now. I tell you, I can't do it, Lee. I'm scared. Get up and do as I tell you. But Lee, I... Never mind the argument. Remember, you'll kill my wife even though you are married to that old buzzard. Now, listen. When I say I'm sick, you let him have it with a hammer. I've got the gun. What's the matter, you two? Go on in here. The visitors are getting cold. All right, Adam, let's go. Uh, what's the matter with you, George? Letting all this good food go to waste? I ain't hungry. You ain't hungry? Why not? You put in 16 hours a day planting those vines. I don't know. I just ain't hungry. Guess I'm sick. Oh, that's too bad. Hey, Patricia, see if you can find some of that castor oil in the medicine chest. All right. I'll go right away. I don't want no castor oil. I just feel sick. Patricia, I think I'm sick. You mean now? Yeah, now. Patricia, what are you doing to that hammer? You'll find out soon enough, you old fool. What do you mean? Oh, what do you think she married you for, love? Hey, keep away from me. Shut, Shut up, you old fool. Patricia! Oh, George. George, listen. What? The dog howling. Howling in his departed spirit. Oh, that's get over here, though. Now, listen. You know what you're going to do and to say. I never think of looking for him where we buried him. You better plant something in that pet. Me? Well, where are you going? I'm taking on the lamb for a while. Remember, you do everything just as I told you. George, George, don't leave me here with, with him. No, forget it. First thing you do, you clean up the house. George, George, come back. I'll see you later. In the meantime, we'll be hearing from you. Just driving into town. Wondered if you'd like a ride. Well, that's kind of you, Mrs. Kelly, but I got a lot of work to do today. I, I don't think I'd better, really. Oh, now that's too bad. My, ain't it hot today? Yes, it is hot. Haven't seen uh, Mr. LeFay around. Is he taken sick? Well, no. No, he, he's very well. He, he's gone away on a little trip. On a little trip? Well, where'd he go? Um, down to Mexico. He... He has some mining property down there, you know. Oh, yes. Seems to do remember him saying something about his mining stock. That was before you married him. He was more neighborly then. How about the hired man? I suppose he's staying on, taking care of you. No, he, he's gone, too. Well, now, do tell. So you're all alone, eh? Yeah. George got a better job over in Porterville. Well, must be hard on you keeping the place up all by yourself. Uh, I, I managed somehow. Mr. LeFair be gone long? Well, I, I'm not sure. Several months, anyway. Well, if you get lonely, you must drop over to see me. After all, we should be good neighbors. Yes, indeed. I'll, I'll do that, Mrs. Stanley. Well, guess I better get along to town now. Goodbye, Mrs. Stanley, and, and do drop in again. Indeed, I will. Goodbye, Miss LeFair. Bye, Mr. Stanley. Snooping old gossip. A 
few days later, Anna receives a letter from her husband, that is, George, and promptly leaves for town for the first time since the murder of Lasser. Her first stop is the bank, where the late rancher's money is deposited. Why, good afternoon, Mrs. Lasser. Good afternoon, Mr. Walsh. You're quite a stranger. Yeah, I don't get in very often. I hear Mr. Lasser's out of town. Mrs. Stanley was in last week. I expected you'd hear it from her. Yeah, he's... He's gone to Mexico to look after his mining properties. Well, so you're a widow for a while, eh? A widow? Oh. Oh. Yeah, for a while. What can I do for you? Well, I, I just got a letter from my husband, and he enclosed a letter to you. Here it is. Please honor my wife's checks for whatever amount she cares to draw against my account. Very well, Mrs. Affair. We'll be glad to take care of you. I suppose you'd like some money today. Yeah. How much? About $100. All right, I'll get it for you right away. For several months, Anna draws comfortable sums against Lester's account, money which she splits jointly with her husband, who remains in hiding at Exeter, a small town nearby. Then one day she appears at the bank with another order, Mr. Lazare has decided to remain in Mexico indefinitely. He wants me to sell out and join him there. Well, we'll miss you, Mrs. Lazare. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my husband tells me you've made him offers in the past for his property, and he's made out and signed this bill of sale, which I've signed too. Well, how much does he want for the property? Five thousand dollars. He tells me you offered him that several years ago. Oh, I see. I don't quite remember. Or perhaps uh, Mr. Howard will. Well, here's the bill of sale, and here's his order to pay the money over to me. Can you take care of this right away? Well, not this minute, Mr. Lasser. That's quite a sum of money. Uh, could you come back tomorrow? Well, if I have to. I'm afraid you will. I want to get started to Mexico as soon as possible. I, I miss my husband, so. Yes, I can appreciate that fact. There'd be no way to get the money later in the day. I'll be here until late this afternoon. Well, I'm afraid not. I guess you'll have to come back tomorrow. Oh, very well, then. I'll, I'll be in in the morning. That'll be fine, Mrs. Lothair. We'll have everything taken care of by then. Thank you, Mr. Walton. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Lothair. Can you come in a moment, Lord? Yes, sir. What is it? Did you ever discuss the purchase of the Lothair property with old man Lothair? Why, no. Neither did I. Why, what's up? And Mrs. Lasser just came in and asked five thousand dollars for the property. Had a bill of sale made out by Lasser and said that uh, we had offered him that amount for the place. Ooh, that's strange. I don't like the looks of this thing. Doesn't sound right. Are you going to pay her the money? I am not. I'm going to call up the constable and tell him about it. Banker informs Constable Grant of Fresno County of the circumstances of Mrs. Lasser's request. An investigation is started, and Constable Grant, shadowing Mrs. Lasser, sees her meet Lee Hammond, alias Cousin George, her husband, in front of the Fresno Post Office. He follows them out to the Lasser ranch. I beg your pardon, Mr. Lasser, but I'd like to ask you a few questions. Who are you? I'm Constable Grant. What do you want to ask me questions about? That's your husband. What do you want to know about him? I want to know where he is. Well, he's, he's in Mexico. I see. And uh, who's this gentleman here? He's my cousin, George. Hmm. Just the same time your husband did, didn't he? Hey, listen, what's the big idea? Can I visit with my cousin without all the annoyance from the cops? Well, don't get excited. I just want to get at the bottom of it. At the bottom of what? Listen, uh, sir, are you sure your husband's in Mexico? Of course he is. He's down in the two hour mines of... He's staying with Thomas Parley, the superintendent of the mine. Mm, he told you he'd been offered $5,000 for the bank for this property? Sure, sure he told her that. I was working here at the time. I heard him say it was dinner one night. Well, that's very interesting. As a matter of fact, the bank at one time wanted to buy this place and offered him $10,000 and refused to sell. But he'd never part with the place. And he'd come in with an order to sell for $5,000. Well, he wanted to get rid of the place quick. Sure, sure, that's it. And he wanted my cousin here to get down to him in Mexico as soon as possible. No, yeah, no, that doesn't sound plausible. The bank had paid $10,000 as soon as five. If he really wanted to sell, he'd probably have asked 15. I'm afraid 
there's something crooked about this whole thing. Well, I haven't any idea what you're driving at. My my husband is very eccentric, of course. Yeah, there's no place to go into all that. You two better come along to headquarters with me where we can talk this over in more detail. Now, look here. You can't but, uh, go... Uh, hmm. you come quietly or will I have to place you under arrest? <laughs> Officers concentrate their questioning on Mrs. LaSerre. For hours, she sticks to her story, telling them repeatedly about LaSerre's trip to Mexico. Mrs. LaSerre, we're all tired. I know we are. I've told you the truth. Why don't you let me alone? You haven't told the truth, Mrs. LaSerre. You're lying, Mrs. LaSerre. Where's your husband? Don't tell us he's in Mexico. We don't believe you. Where is he? He's in You're me. lying. Is he dead? Who killed him? You killed him. No, no, no. Stop. Oh, please don't ask me any more questions. Where is Boston LaSerre? What do you think from the red house? Buried under the garden patch with a skull case and an abortion on his head. That's where he is. Mm. Who killed him? I... No. No, I didn't. Lee made me do it. He's really my husband. He made me marry Lizette for his money. He was always crazy about money. He made me do it. Lee ruined my life. He married me when I was 15. Oh, I've never had a chance. I've never had a life like other girls. Lee made a tramp out of me. He made me marry the old man. He told me to hit him with a hammer. And, and then he shot him. He did the whole thing. Leave the murderer and get me. Hang him and tell he loves him. So she squealed, huh? Well, that's okay. If she's going to talk, I'll talk too. She did it. She planned the whole thing. And if she swings for this job, she'll get just what's coming to her. She figured out the whole deal. Couldn't make enough tip on those guys at the show house she's working at. What kind of life do you think I had with that woman? I loved her, so I put up with it for years. But I'm not going to let her squeal and lie send me up. She's the brains of this job, and I'm going to tell her not to send her where she belongs. But in spite of Hammond's braggadocia and Anna's hysteria, both changed their pleas to guilty after the old rancher's body is disinterred from his shallow grave. And in spite of their attempts to shift the blame on each other, they are both sentenced to life imprisonment. Anna in San Quentin, Hammond in Folsom. And here our story should end. But it doesn't. Only the first chapter closes. Ten years pass. Then a short chapter is written at the Folsom prison farm when a trustee named Charles Lee Hammond escapes. Five more years pass. It is late summer of 1931. A hitchhiker stands by a culvert outside of Merced. His wrist is tired, flagging fast, expensive cars, but his hopes rise anew as a sputtering old wreck hops down the highway. Hey, want a lift? Okay, I do. Okay, up in. Oh, thanks. familiar to me. You never saw me before. You look a lot like Snake Hammond, a friend of mine who escaped from the prison farm at Folsom a few years ago. Only he didn't have a mustache. Smarter than seven times, wasn't it, Eddie? W- what? <laughs> Don't think I'd forget you, do you? So you are Snake Hammond. Yeah, with a mustache. Well, I'll be a so-and-so. Last person in the world I'd expect to meet. Well, just forget that you met me. Sure, you know me, Snake. And it ain't Snake Hammond anymore. It's Robert Dorsey. Where are you living? Oh, down in Fresno. What? Why, that's where you turned the trick that sent you up, ain't it? Sure. Ain't you afraid to go back there? No, it's the safest place in the world. Last place they think to look for me. Yeah, I guess you're right at that. Sure. And I'm doing all right, too. Got gone straight. Got a good-looking wife. A and... wife? But your wife's still doing time in Quentin, ain't she? Hammond's wife is. But Dorsey's wife is living with Dorsey in Fresno, see? I see. Uh, what they don't know won't hurt him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> sure. You gotta be cagey. Take this car business, for instance. I bought it in the name of Bert Grant. You know, cover up your tracks. Sure, it's always a good idea. Well, here we are in Merced. That's as far as I go. What are you going to do here? Try to pick me up a job, glum and fruit. Glad to have seen you, Snake. I mean, uh, Dorsey. Yeah, glad to have seen you, Eddie. This will be all right at this corner Okay. 
Look me up. You ever get down around Fresno? Okay, I will. So long. So long. Hup Coupe, 1923 model, in the name of Bert Grant. And there's 200 bucks on that guy's head. It is only a matter of a few days before Sheriff Overholt of Fresno County calls Deputy Sheriff W.H. Collins into his office. Harry? I just got a tip from the warden at Folsom that Charles Lee Hammond is living in Fresno. Who's he, sir? Killed a rancher out here about 15 years ago. Went up for life and escaped in 1926. Warden says he's driving a Hup Coupe 1923 model registered under the name of Bert A. Grant, General Delivery, Fresno. Go out and bring this guy in. Okay, sir. Uh... cheery acceptance of the assignment is no indication of the task he faces locating the one single second-hand dealer among the scores in Fresno who had sold a 1923 Hup Coupe. He sticks with the job for weeks and finally one day locates the seller of the car. But all he can discover regarding the purchaser is that he worked in a packing plant. Another search for a 1923 Hup parked outside a packing plant is rewarded days later only to be a discouragement when Collins sees a young man of 25 drive off in the car. However, he follows the car to a trim little house on a side street. From neighbors, he discovers that this is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Dorsey, and that the young man is Mrs. Dorsey's son by another marriage. Equipped with this information, Collins approaches a man feeding chickens in the backyard of the house. I beg your pardon. Are you Mr. Dorsey? Yeah. What is it? I just wanted to ask you about that old car. What about it? Did you buy it? Sure. Paid dirty bucks for it. What of it? You bought it personally? Yeah. And your name is Dorsey? Yeah. And why'd you buy it under the name of Bertie Grant? What? Say, who are you anyway? Collins of the sheriff's office. I think you better come and tell us some more about that car. Okay. Okay, sure. Sure, I'll go with you. Can I go in the house first and get a coat? No, you can't. No funny business. I'm sure the sheriff won't mind talking to you in your shirt sleeve. Yeah, but you I'll see... I'll I... the police car here and make it snappy. Okay, okay, nothing to get excited about. I can explain about that pony name. <laughs> you see, I was figuring on pulling freight on the old lady, and I didn't want to be followed. You know how it is. Sure, I know how it is. A few moments later, Deputy Sheriff Collins ushers Hammond alias Dorsey, alias Grant, into the sheriff's office. Well, Sheriff, here's your Bert A. Grant. Good. Look here, Sheriff, what's the big idea of all this fuss over a fake name on a registration slip? Uh, let's save everyone's time. You're an escaped convict, and your name is Charles Lee Hammond. Now, you're crazy. My name's Robert Dorsey. I never heard of anyone named Hammond. You're all wrong. Let's see your fingers. Uh-huh. I'd know him anywhere. You're Charles Lee Hammond, all right. You can't bluff me. You can't identify fingerprints by looking at them. Turn up your right sleeve. Why? You know why. Hammond had a tattoo mark on his right arm. It's a horseshoe with the words good luck on it. Okay. Okay, you win. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck. I'm nuts. <laughs> trial this time. The law's procedure was clear-cut. Twenty-four hours later, Charles Lee Hammond, alias George, alias Bert Grant, alias Robert Dorsey, was back in Folsom and outfitted in the striped uniform that marked the escaped convict. And in San Quentin remains Anna, his wife, the oldest woman inmate in terms of incarceration. She has never heard of her husband's escape, his bigamous marriage, in which he duplicated one of her crimes, and his recapture and permanent reestablishment of residence within Folsom's gray wall. But Fresno officers fight on in their endless battle with crime. Today, they are better equipped than ever before. The Rio Grande cracked gasoline rides with the police, increasing their power, 
increasing their speed. Yet as police records in many cities prove, Rio Grande costs no more because its patented cracking process develops extra power, mileage, and speed from every drop. Use the gasoline your police use. Rio Grande Cracked. Attention all cars. Cancellation broadcast 79 regarding a murder. Suspect in this case now in custody. That's all. Rolls and clips.